Champions. We hope you had a great week and are just as excited as we are for this week's episode. Last week we had so much fun, but this week we have even more exciting activities, including another great song from Josh and Miri. Now, this week's word is distraction. It's important that athletes remain on track and aren't easily distracted. How about you? Are you easily distracted? Let's put it to the test and have a staring competition. First one to blink or laugh is out. Go. I'm pretty sure you laugh first. Good morning, everybody. Today's story is called Jesus is Tempted. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, there to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted, which means he didn't get to eat anything, and became very hungry. During the time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no. The scriptures say, people do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the highest point in the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you don't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and only serve him. The devil went away and the angels came and looked after Jesus. Hi guys, it's time for our team talk again. Now, to be a top athlete, you've got to stay focused. You've got to train hard, follow your coach's plan, not be distracted and not be tempted to cheat. In our everyday lives, none of us are perfect. There's lots of times where we're tempted to say or do the wrong thing. And we often don't like being told what to do. Now, as a little test, Yesterday, I made some scrummy tiffin and I made a sign that said, do not eat. I left it in the kitchen. Let's have a look and see what Rich does when he sees this plate of scrummy food. He ate the tip in. Now, would you have done it? Would you have snuck a little piece? I think I might have. Now, today's story is about Jesus being tempted. He was about to start his job that God had given him to do, teaching people about who God was, showing people how much God loved them. But before he did that, he went into the desert to spend some time alone with God 
for 40 days he didn't have anything to eat. He must have been so hungry and so tired. All of a sudden, the enemy showed up. Satan came with three tricky choices for Jesus. Three times he tried to make Jesus go off course, to do differently from God's plan. But three times Jesus said, no, I'm gonna stay in God's direction. I'm gonna stay the course. I won't give in. I'm not gonna cheat. Isn't that amazing? Jesus didn't ever cheat. Jesus never did anything wrong. That's really important for us because remember, Jesus came with a rescue mission. And if he'd cheated, if he'd given in, then the rescue mission would have had to have been canceled. It's also great to know that we can ask Jesus for help when we're feeling tempted to do something or say something that we know is wrong. We can ask Jesus to help. He understands what it's like to be tempted, but he didn't give in. And we can ask for God's help as well. All right, team, good talk. Today's challenge is the digestive biscuit challenge. All you've got to do is get a chocolate digestive, put it on your forehead, and wriggle it down your face till it's in your mouth. Without using your hands? No hands. No legs. No legs. legs. Nobody else helping you. Okay. Okay. Process wins. In three, two, one, go. Today we're going to be making a marble room out of a paper plate, like this one that I have here, some paper, some sellotape or a glue stick and a pair of scissors. But please be careful because remember scissors can be dangerous, so ask an adult to help you. We also are going to need some marbles or a bouncy ball when it's finished so we can play with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut some strips of paper. I've got some orange paper here but you could use some white or any other colour that you have. I'm just going to cut along a long thin strip like this. There we go. So now I've got a long thin strip. What am I going to do with it? Well I need to take some sellotape or my glue stick and I need to cut a few pieces of this sellotape. Remember scissors can be sharp so ask an adult to help you. Okay, I'm just going to stick these pieces to my table so they're ready for when I need them. And what are we going to do with these pieces of sellotape? Well, we're going to put one across here at the end near the end of your piece I'm putting mine across like that you can see so it almost makes a little T then we're going to take our paper plate and attach this just stick it flat down onto the paper plate like that then we haven't got a loop like I have here we've got a flat piece of paper so what we need to do is we need to take another piece of sellotape and we need to move this up to make a loop. Can you see that here? So anything can run through. There we go. So then we need to take our next piece of tape here and we're going to stick that down, can you see, down there. So it secures our loop and leaves it in place like this. There we go. So now we've got a loop for our marble to run through. You could repeat it like I've done in this one, or you could use it with 
Another method which we've got to make some barriers like this for your marble to run around and inside. So how do we do that? We're going to take another strip of paper and we're going to take another piece of sellotape. But this time we're going to stick the sellotape in the middle of the piece of paper. Then we're going to take our paper plate again. This one's got my loop on it. And we're just going to stick the sellotape down. So you're curving it like that. Can you see it's stuck flat at the moment? And my sellotape is attached to the plate here and to the paper. So once we've attached that, we're going to pop it up like this. And now you can see that my paper is standing, but we need to create a pattern so we can either curl it round like like this or we could do a zigzag or anything but I'm going to do a little curve with mine so I need to take another piece of sellotape and I need to attach that to the paper here and then stick that down decide what curve I'm going to do then stick that down onto the paper you see that this has created a curve. Now you would need to stick another piece here to make sure it's nice and secure. So once you've done that, you can have something like this one that I made earlier. And you can see that the marble can run through all of these little barriers. And even there's some dead ends until it reaches the start, not the start line, the finish line. But don't worry if you don't have any of those supplies because you could also make something like this out of Lego and Duplo. So you see here I've got a Lego board and I've got some Lego bricks and I've just created a nice little route so you can go run your marbles around. Oh no, I'm at a dead end so you have to go back, see if you can reach the finish line. You can see, there we go. I hope you enjoyed making a craft today and you're having lots of fun using your marbles on your marble runs. And I'll see you later. We need to buy my mum some chocolates. Yeah, on a card. It's my mum's birthday. She was birthday yesterday. She's so old, she's 30. No, she's not. She's 21. She told me, and your mum would not lie. Oh, um, anyway, I decided, seeing it was her birthday, to take her breakfast in bed. I made toast. Is that what the burning smell was when I came in? Uh. Yeah, I put the toast under the grill, but then I got distracted. How come? When you've got to go, you've got to go. Where? Do I have to spin it out to you? To the toilet. When I got back, the toast was... Mum said it was the fault that counted. I told her to have a lie in, seeing it was her birthday. That's when you came round, Bert. Yeah, well, we planned it beforehand. She was in bed, we would make her a birthday cake. We got out the bowls, ten of them in all. There was one for the margarine. Another for the eggs. Yes, Bert. He decided to show off and threw an egg in the air. I would have caught it if you hadn't made me jump. It wasn't my fault. He decided to show off. I wasn't messing around. I was carefully spooning out the flour. Yeah, but a wasp landed on her hand and she panicked. Flicked her hand and the flower went all over me on the floor. Anyway, we finally finished mixing the cake and put it in the oven. It was going to take 45 minutes.
five minutes to bake. That was when we should have tidied up and done the washing up. Yes, but disaster struck. Why did you have to distract me? Me? Distract you? You distracted me. I only asked you if you wanted to go on my roller skates. And I only said, wow, yes please. <laughs> we had lots of fun for an hour or so. Yep, you get skipped. We forgot about the mess and the washing up. And the birthday cake for your mum. Oh boy, we were in trouble. Why do you always distract me, Bert? Now we've got to go and clear up the mess and make a new cake. As the first one came out rather dark. Yeah, cremated. But before we do, I've been dying to show you my new computer game. Ah, you're doing it again! What? Distracting me! We'd be great kids if we didn't get distracted so easily. You sound like my mum. Bye! So, this morning, we have been learning about the story when Jesus was tempted. Now often we are tempted to do something wrong because we don't trust God. Sometimes we get worried about things and think that we have to sort them out ourselves instead of letting God sort them out and take care of us. So for this reflection today, you are gonna need a stone. Now I just went out into the garden and I found three different stones. You could have a big stone, a medium sized stone, or a little stone. So, once you've found your stone, I want you to hold on to your stone in your hands. Think about the things that you feel worried about, or things that you feel bad about, or things that you have been tempted to do. Now imagine that you are sticking all of these things to the stones. So the time that you attempted to do the bad thing, stick it on the stone. Some of the things that you're worried about, stick it to the stone. Now, what I want you to do today is let go of the stone. So maybe you could leave it somewhere on a walk or bury it in the garden Take it down to the river or the sea and throw it into the water. And pray and thank God that we don't have to hold our worries in. If we let them go, God will catch them. <laughs>